Thank you all guys for coming. I wasn't expecting this many people, but that's a good sign, I guess. Um, first, let me start a little bit by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Rafuls, and I do quality engineering for Red Hat in Czech Republic for its virtualization solution, which is over on the upstream. So <clears throat> during this talk, I will try to go uh, fast and make it light. It's been a long week. So um, to begin with, I'm going to be talking a little bit about, uh, I'm going to actually show you a simple test scenario for running PyTest on Jenkins. And we're going to have a little bit of a high overview on PyTest custom plugins and how PyTest uh, loads custom plugins. And then we will look a little bit at the challenges faced at the time of trying to replicate this uh, Jenkins job on your local environment with uh, Docker. And we will look also at uh, Docker as a solution for, for doing this. And then if we have enough time, I'll make a little small live demo if it doesn't fail miserably, but yeah, okay. Now, I'm not going to be talking, I'm not going to be, I don't want to intend to sweet talk you into start using containers. You should be aware of the security implications that comes with containerizing your applications. And um, we're not going to talk about containerizing Jenkins. That's already been done. And it's ideal if you already have some, uh, some, uh, some high overview on Jenkins, PyTest, and Docker. And also, uh, most people would think that this is about the Docker Py library, which is for managing uh, your containers through Python code, but that's not the case in, in this talk. Okay. Now, so why did I decide to, to talk about this and how did, how did we came up with, with this solution for uh, for containerizing Jenkins. Uh, now, when I first um, came to, to Red Hat, I, I was given the task of uh, replicating uh, my Jenkins job, our testing uh, framework on my local environment. And for doing so, I was given a six pages document that uh, it actually took me approximately two weeks to <laughs> complete. Um, and then as when I realized how big of a fool's errand it was to, to try and do so. Uh, plus, like, I also realized that most of the people on my team was, uh, was, was having issues when trying to replicate their environments as well. But at the same time, those environments that were successfully working at some point with the constant evolution of, of our testing framework, uh, those setups were easily lost. So there, has, there, there had to be a way to, to keep, up this, uh, keep up with this and have it centralized and uh, make sure that no one had to waste two weeks of their time to set it up. Now, at the time, uh, there were, we were not using virtual environments. Therefore, you had to install uh, the, all the requirements from the testing framework on your local machine, and that could have potentially caused some dependencies, some dependency issues on the libraries that you already had installed on your machine. Now, um, also, like the biggest uh, benefit of this was to be able to put a Docker image on an internal registry that you can run on your organization so that whenever a newcomer uh, started working, just by pulling the image, would be able to start debugging straight away. <clears throat> now, how many of you have uh, been using PyTest on Jenkins already? Okay, that's a good number. So, uh, the, there's a couple of things that you need to take into consideration at the time of trying to uh, replicate this Jenkins environment uh, or this job run. Uh, so first thing, uh, if the job that you're trying to replicate is parameterized, you should uh, look at the parameterized 
options on, on, your, on your job, on the configuration of your job. And here you can have all sorts of things, and these parameters can be used by Jenkins in many other places during this, the job execution. Uh, in, in the case that I will show you in this sample scenario, this small sample scenario, uh, um, we only have a parameter that will be used on one of the build steps that I'll, I'll show you further on. Now, you might also have distributed uh, tests, and you could also have parameters for determining to which hosts you want or on which host you want the job to run. So that's one thing to take into consideration. Then uh, if the job itself, itself has any Git integration, and if the, you are, actually this is the most common practice, so you probably do so. Uh, so just, it, it's important to check that all those repositories uh, are gonna be used for our local environment. So uh, this, is, this is really important, and we will actually link all those repositories to volumes on, on our containers. Now, uh, finally, uh, I would look at the build steps on, on, the, on the configuration of the Jenkins job, and uh, it will depend on the complexity of your testing framework, but you might have, uh, in this case, I'm just, I just have one, uh, one build step where it's, it's actually a dynamic bash script that takes one of the, uh, the parameters that, that I defined before, for choosing which tests to run. And uh, you, you might have additional build steps that could, uh, for example, in our case, uh, generate configuration files that are used by custom plugins. And uh, you need to make sure that all those steps are covered before you decide to run PyTest on your, on your container. Now, uh, with PyTest virtually, oh, I see again. Okay. Uh, with PyTest, uh, virtually any Python module uh, can be registered as a plugin. So how PyTest does the, the plugin discovery, how, how it, uh, it checks all the plugins that are on your testing framework, it first starts by loading all the built-in plugins that were installed with PyTest. Secondly, it looks for, um, it actually loads all the plugins that are registered through Setup Tools entry point. Uh, I will show you a small sample on the next slide where I am actually passing one, of, one, one plugin that is outside our testing framework through uh, the, the Setup Tools. Uh, third thing that it does, it pre-scans the command line for the minus p name option. Uh, and it loads the specified plugin before doing the actual command line parsing of PyTest. Uh, in, this, in this case, you can also choose to deactivate already registered plugins by uh, prefixing uh, the minus P option. Actually, I didn't expect this to show like that, but it's minus P no semicolon and the name of the plugin. So that's how you avoid uh, loading plugins that perhaps are causing issues on your, on your testing framework. Uh, next thing that PyTest loads, it's, it looks for all the conftest.py files as inferred by the command line invocation. And if you uh, don't have any test, bytes, uh, test paths specified, it uses the current directory as a path. Now, you need to uh, note that PyTest does not find conftest.py files uh, in deeper nested subdirectories at tool startup, so it is usually a good idea to keep your conftest.py files in the top level of, of, your, of your root project. Now, next. It does, uh, it does also load uh, recursively all the plugins specified by the, there is this pytest underscore plugins variable that you can specify it inside your conf test. So that is actually the last uh, place where uh, uh, pytest looks for custom plugins. 
So now if you, if you want to make your plugin externally available, you may define what is a so-called entry point for your distribution so that PyTest finds your plugin module. Um, entry points are, are a, future, a feature that it's provided by, by setup tools and PyTest looks uh, specifically for the PyTest 11, I cannot see now here, oh yeah, here. It looks for this entry point and as, uh, it, actually, so the, it actually looks for this entry point and it loads all the planes that you have defined under this entry point. Uh, right, so now uh, when, I, when I first started to trying to containerize this environment, I started by creating a base image with Fedora and a couple of instructions that I already knew that had to be there. Um, for example, one of the first things that I had to do was at the time of linking uh, my local repositories to volumes inside my container, uh, I, I realized that I had to include all these, uh, all these uh, repositories into my, my Python path. So I, I managed to do that by including the env instruction on, on the Docker file for creating the image. And later on, I started trying to install all the requirements that were defined on, on our testing framework uh, requirements.txt file inside, inside the the root directory of, of the testing framework. And it was then when I realized that some of the requirements that I was trying to install with pip had, uh, had uh, header files from RPMs that were, not miss were missing or were not included on uh, any place on, the, on, the, on my testing framework. Because all these dependencies were either uh, either already included in the operating system that was being used for running these tests uh, or being provisioned by Foreman or other um, services that were uh, invisible to my testing framework. Um, also, how I, how I managed to uh, see which plugins were loaded by PyTest at every point uh, while I was trying to containerize these, was by using the trace config option from PyTest, which actually shows you all the plugins that are being recognized by PyTest at the time. <clears throat> now, as you can see there, I have this uh, run statement that I included on my Docker file. Now, uh, it is recommended that you minimize the number of, of run commands because there, uh, in that way, you, uh, it makes for less overhead at the time of uh, actually running your container. So now, when, when you're linking a volume on your container to a local repo directory on your, uh, on your machine, if you have the SE Linux policy in force, then uh, the container won't be able to write to this directory. And in the case that you're, it might be possible that your, your, your tests are generating log files that are saved on that same uh, repository. And if you have SE Linux in force, the container will fail with a permission deny or an ABC uh, message in the host sys log. So to avoid that, uh, you need to change the context of the directory, of the, in this case the repository directory, to, uh, the, to that tag in particular, svsandbox file t. Now, this has, been, this has become much more easier since Docker 1.7, because as you can see on the, on the second, on the second uh, piece of code here, uh, I am prepending where is it? Yeah, I am preparing the, the set at the end. And since Docker 1.7, this, uh, this statement 
automatically changes the context of the directory that you are trying to link to your container. Therefore, the container will be able to write to that repository. Now, uh, further on, at the very end of my Docker file, I, I define these two instructions, the entry point and the CMD. Now, the entry point, it virtually makes your container executable. How so? Because when you run your container image, uh, the first command that the container will run will be the entry point, and the CMD, it's any additional options that you would like to run with your entry point. But why is it separated like this? It's because uh, the CMD is overwritable. Like you can overwrite that by adding options to your run statement for when, for when you want to run your container, and therefore it makes it uh, more more flexible. Now, um, at the time of debugging your your PyTests. Uh, you might want to, I'm not sure, I use IPDB, for example, but unless you use PDB or PyTests on PDB, uh, you, you won't be able to, to debug because PyTest is capturing the standard output, so you need to, you need to run PyTest with the minus S option so that you are able to use any other debuggers apart from PDB or PyTest PDB. So I went through that real fast. Now, I will show you a little bit of, of a live demo and a small, uh, this small scenario that I, that I made with Jenkins. Uh, you can find uh, the, the testing, framework, testing framework that we're gonna be using on, on this live demo on this repository. And the second repository contains the Docker files and the Docker Compose file that I am using for instantiating these Jenkins environment. So I'm not sure if I'm able to see here, but wait. Oh yeah, cool. So this is a Jenkins instance that I have running on a container, of course, in my local machine. And this job in particular uh, is a parameterized job that takes, uh, it takes only one parameter and it, based on the input that we put there, it will run one test or the other as we saw on the, on the bash script before. So I'll run a bad test and a good test. One should fail, the other one shouldn't. Uh, most likely both will fail, but uh, okay. So we got a failing test here and the other one. It's success. So let's say I want to I want to debug this failing test that is running on my Jenkins instance. Now I already I already created a container image uh, that will replicate my my Jenkins uh, instance and a container that I can use for uh, debugging my PyTest locally. Now I have some scripts here. Not bad looks. So, if I run the, if I run this this script for running this bad test, I can show you how what does this file contain, and it's basically a run instruction for for Docker to run with uh, the FC24 container that I created with uh, with uh, with this Docker file. And basically, I am telling straight away to PyTest which test to run. So now, in theory, if I, I this is the testing framework. So in theory, if I edit my bad test to include this breakpoint, then I should be able now to run my container and I should be able to hit that breakpoint. And yeah, there you see. So, and you can. Why don't you minus one PDB? 
because that actually uh, doesn't, it actually, oh, well, yeah, it, 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 drop, it, it actually hits the breakpoint uh, when an, uh, an exception is raised. It, so it, it actually it stops the execution whenever uh, a, a, a traceback is, is raised. Now, you might have no non-failing tests that you will still want to debug, so. Um, okay. So, let me show you, I got another script here as well. Uh, and let me show you, I have defined on my conf test, I have defined a s small uh, plugin, a small custom plugin that uh, is in the form of a, of a mark, and I am using that on my good file. No, sorry. Here. So basically, this mark uh, is for including an option name on the PyTest run that will look for any tests that are tagged with whatever I introduce on on my on my on my PyTest run. So if I go here now. Yeah. So if I run the the good file now. This, uh, this file, in fact, has, as you can see, I am passing the minus E option and the, the good tab that was defined on my, uh, on my marker for that test in particular. So if I try to run this container and I changed the I changed the label to whatever it will actually skip the test because it's not the label for good that we had defined on on that test now uh, additionally we can see with the trace config this is also just running uh, pytest with the trace config and uh, on the trace config, you will see all the planes that have been uh, registered by, uh, by PyTest, as well as, uh, as well as the conf tests that have been loaded by, by. So if I do this, you can see, see, like, in this case, it's showing me that it has loaded the conf test from the root directory, which is on the container itself, because I am I am routing my volumes, I'm linking my volumes to the main root folder on 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 my container. So that's pretty much it. Now, yeah. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now, if you if you have any questions, I'm afraid we don't have any more time. Do we? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, <laughs> sorry, man. Uh, for for this container in particular. Yeah, the Aha. Uh, uh, okay. Um, yeah. Sure. It's should be. So this is uh, the one for the Jenkins uh, instance that it's actually picking up the base image from Docker Hub, this is the Jenkins latest, and I include some, some other instructions for, for what I needed at the time. Uh, then you get the Jenkins slave Docker file, which is just the Java, the Java container, base container, and there I am downloading the the, the Java agent from Jenkins for executing the the, the file. Then, so you can find this on, on GitHub. I 
there, you, there is, you can find the, the Docker files there and, and it should be. The Docker files where you had entry points and stuff, where are they? Ah, I, well, for this, for this uh, talk in particular, I, I didn't use any entry points or, or CMD, but it's, it's like that. It's just like you can only use CMD once, and the entry point should be your, your default command to be executed with the Docker. Hello. Thank you for the presentation. It was a very nice setup. Sorry, I cannot, I cannot hear you. Thank you for the presentation. That was a nice setup. I have two questions. Yeah. Um, first of all, this looks like it... Uh, one of the benefits of this might be able to run multiple tests um, from Jenkins at the same time. Is this something that you've tried and it works properly with the setup? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can run every, any any test that you have on your testing framework if you already have it uh, set up like that on your Jenkins instance. So this Jenkins instance was just queuing them because that's how Jenkins yeah, was yeah, set up. Yeah, yeah. This Jenkins instance was just uh, to to show the two different places where like uh, the Jenkins job that is running the PyTest and my local uh, PyTest run that will be able to debug the test. Okay, cool. Uh, my next question, do you, um, can you, can you tell me what that shell you had where it showed whether the git was dirty or clean? It looked very nice, I liked that. This yeah. is all my ZSH with some tweaks, yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. Uh, hello, um, <clears throat> thank you for the talk, it's very, very important. Um, well, uh, my question is uh, like this, when it comes, uh, in my understanding uh, personally, when it comes to deploying your application, I can understand the benefits of using Docker, there are a lot of advantages, like um, encapsulating all, the, all of the dependencies inside your container so you can ship it as is, or uh, make, it, make your application uh, cloud native ready, something like, stuff like this. But talking about testing only, what is the real advantage of using the containerized solution with respect to other available solutions that, in my opinion, might be more lightweight solutions like virtual environment? Yeah, well, so have you considered this uh, uh, other solution? Uh, and yeah, if yeah, not, uh, what is your opinion like on this? As, as I said before, given the complexity of our testing framework, uh, this was the best solution at the time. And uh, I'm, I, as I said, also I'm, I'm not going to. I don't want to preach or sweet talk you into using Docker or containers for for replicating your Jenkins instance. But uh, this this is actually saving us a lot of time for newcomers, and also uh, it's maintaining some sort of uh, uniformity on 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 our on our testing framework. You know. Do we have any more questions? No, then thank you very much, Gonzalo, once more. <laughs>